Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is the Ten Minas. And Jesus told more than 30 parables to help people learn to live a life that is pleasing to God. And people loved not only the miracles that Jesus performed, they loved the stories that he told. The parables Jesus used were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. Somebody asked me this week, why did Jesus use parables? Well, I just told you why. They're earthly stories, but they have heavenly meanings. Also, parables uh, help us. If we have a soft heart, we get it. If we have a hard heart, we don't get it. And so that's a way Jesus could figure out who was, whose heart was soft and whose heart was hard towards him. And so Jesus used parables as a way of helping his listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes that he wanted to change. Now, after he, his last visit to the temple, Jesus took the disciples to the Mount of Olives where he told them the parable of the ten talents. That's where we were last week. We learned that a talent is a bar of silver or gold, usually silver, weighing between 20, uh, 60 and 75 pounds, or in kilos, 26 to 35 kilos. A talent was equal to 10, 15 to 20 years of work. That, that's a lot of money. Uh, so we need to free ourselves from the thought that one talent was not enough to work with. Now, as an application to our lives from this parable, we can think of talents as God-given abilities, resources, and opportunities. And in this parable, Jesus said a man gave talents to three of his servants. One received five, one received two, and one received one. And he put his servants in charge of these talents, saying, go and put these to work for him. And the first two men went without delaying uh, to work with what they had been given. They traded with what they had to grow the resources that they had received. They were wise. Then Jesus said about the last man, he who received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money, Matthew chapter 25 and verse 18. It'd be good to ask ourselves the question, what unused, hidden, or buried talent is holding back our spiritual growth? And procrastination is one of the most common differences between success and failure in life. Uh, Jesus said, eventually the master returned to check on the progress that each of the servants had made. The first two men were able to double the value of the talents that they were given. It's remarkable. And the master said, good and faithful servants. And he rewarded them with more responsibility. And finally, the third servant came forward to report to his master. And he said, master, I knew you to be a hard man reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed, Matthew chapter 25 and verse 24. He accused his master of being hard-hearted and trying to take advantage of people. But his master answered him, you wicked and slothful servant, you knew I reap where I've not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. Matthew chapter 25, verse 26 and 27. In another unexpected ending to a parable, the master said, take the talent from him and give it to the one who has 10 talents. Matthew 25 and verse 28. Now, what's your reaction to these words of Jesus? Does your reaction reflect a distorted view of the father and how he interacted with the last servant? Uh, how we use our gifts today determines the gifts that we will receive tomorrow. Now, in today's parable, which is very similar, called the ten, ten Minas, it is sometimes referred to as the parable of the pounds in some of the older translations of the Bible. It was the last of four parables Jesus told to prepare people for his second coming. Now, Jesus was in the town of Jericho where he had a powerful encounter with a tax collector by the name of Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus decided to follow Jesus and pay back the people whom he had cheated. 
that conversation ended with Jesus saying, Today, salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. This is the central theme of Luke's gospel, Luke chapter 19, verse 9 and 10. I don't know about you, but that sounds like very good news to me. Jesus came for everyone, not just the Jewish people, but for the whole world. Now, Jesus began this parable by saying a nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and then return. And calling 10 of his servants, he gave them 10 minors. And he said to them, engage in business until I return. Luke chapter 19, verse 12 and 13. In this parable, there were 10 servants and each received one minor. In the parable of the talents, we learn that a talent is usually a bar of silver weighing 60 to 75 pounds. So what is a mina or a mina? <clears throat> it is a stone used as a standard weight in balance scales. It was equal to three months' salary in shekels. And one mina was plenty to work with. Would you like to be given three months' salary today? Minas are mentioned six times in the Bible. Luke is the only one in the New Testament writers to speak about them. Notice that the talents were given uh, in proportion to the servant's ability, but the minors were given equally to all of the servants. Let me ask you, can you think of things that believers all have in common regardless of our ability? Now, after giving his servants the minors, the nobleman instructed them to Engage in business until I come. To engage is an imperative verb. It is a command to work, to be occupied with something, to pursue business, to trade or to exchange. In an unexpected twist, we learn that the servants of this nobleman hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we do not want this man to reign over us. Luke chapter 19 and verse 14. Now, this is something that actually happened in Israel just after Jesus was born. Herod the Great's grandson, Archelaus, wanted to inherit his father's throne after his father died. And so he traveled to Rome to appeal to Caesar Augustus for his father's position. But the Jews sent a delegation to Rome opposing his appointment Nevertheless, Archelaus was given his father's throne, but he did not last long because he was an unwise leader and Rome took away his leadership. Jesus said, when the nobleman returned, having received the kingdom, he ordered those servants whom he had given the money to be called to him that he might know what they had gained by doing business. The first came before him saying, Lord, your miner has made 10 miners more. Luke chapter 19, verse 15 and 16. The nobleman commended him saying, well done, good servant. Because you have been faithful over very little, I shall give you authority over 10 cities. Can you imagine? 10 cities is a lot to inherit as a leader. <clears throat> the second one came and said, Lord, your miner has made five miners more. And he said to him, you are to be over five cities. Luke chapter 19, verse 18 and 19. Then the third servant came to him and said, Lord, here's your miner, which I kept away in a handkerchief for I was afraid of you. And because you are a severe man, you take what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. Luke chapter 19, verse 20 and 21. The nobleman said to him, I will condemn you with your own words, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a severe man, taking what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Then why did you not put my money in the bank and then at my coming I might have collected it with interest? Luke chapter 19, verse 22 and 23. This servant had a twisted view of the nobleman. Are you struggling to see God as being loving and kind? Do you see God as someone to fear and obey with no joy 
or delight. And God wants to free us from having a twisted view of who he is. The parable ended with the nobleman saying, take the miner from him and give it to the one who has 10 miners. Luke chapter 19, verse 24. What the people said to him, Lord, he has 10 miners. And Jesus replied, I tell you, the one who has more will be given, but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. A shocking ending. Luke chapter 19, verse 25 and 26. Once again, what is your reaction to these words of Jesus? Does your reaction reflect a distorted view of who Jesus is? The truth is, how we use our gifts today determine the gifts that we will receive tomorrow. Now, earlier I asked the question, what can you think of that all believers have in common regardless of our ability? Well, here are some things that we have in common. We have salvation in common. We have the Holy Spirit, access to the Father by prayer, moving in power and authority, the choice to obey his commands, the desire to follow his will, the ability to enjoy his presence. I invite you to think about what you could double for Jesus over the next 12 months in your walk with him. Could you double the amount of time you pray or read the Bible or share your faith with others or move in the power and presence of Holy Spirit or double the amount of time you spend uh, to pray for the healing of people, for people to be set free? These are important questions we can ask ourselves out of this parable that we'll hear the master say, well done, good and faithful servant. So these four parables are designed to prepare people for the second coming of Jesus. And there are four important words in each of these parables for us to remember. In the parable of the faithful servant, the word is be awake. In the parable of the ten virgins, it is be prepared. In the parable of the talents, it is be faithful. In the parable of the miners, it's be engaged. And the message of these parables is clear. Jesus is coming, ready or not. Don't be caught with too little, too late. Work with what you have. And in this final parable, use it or lose it. Are you ready for Jesus to come? If you've never received Jesus as your Savior, we invite you to follow Jesus right now. Thank him for dying for you and your place on the cross. Ask Jesus to forgive you for all of your sins. Accept the payment that Jesus made for you. Ask Holy Spirit to fill you with his presence. If you just decided to follow Jesus, write to me, and I'll share more information with you on how to grow as a new follower of Jesus. Next week. We'll continue learning from the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God God bless you and fill you with living hope.